If you have a lung condition or a tracheostomy tube, you may have heard medical professionals talk about using normal saline or hypertonic saline in a nebulizer. While both these items are saline, there are some major differences between the two. Moreover, there is a lot of controversy about if normal saline or hypertonic saline should be used in a nebulizer for various medical conditions. Join me as I discuss normal saline and hypertonic saline and stay tuned to the end to learn about my experiences with hypertonic saline and normal saline. Normal saline is also sometimes called saline or 0.9% sodium chloride. Normal saline is a sterile solution composed of 0.9% sodium chloride in sterile water. It is isotonic to that of body fluids, which means that its concentration is similar to that of body fluids. Each liter of normal saline contains approximately 9 grams of sodium chloride. Perhaps you learned about isotonic solutions in science class. When a solution is isotonic to that of body fluids, the solute concentration inside and outside the cell is the same or nearly identical. Water passes back and forth between the inside of the cell and the outside of the cell at the same rate. The cell size remains the same. Hey guys, guess what? I just used my science degree. And people told me, you will never use that. But I just did. Oh, it's so exciting. And now this is the part of the video where I would show you my fancy diploma on the screen. Bum, 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 bum. Yes, but I don't have it. And you might be thinking, well, she does not have it to show us for this video. That's incorrect. I don't have it. Within six months of graduating from university, I somehow misplaced it. It's a big, giant mystery. If you find my diploma from university, please send it back to me. I would really appreciate it. I spent around $60,000 on it. Perhaps more, perhaps less, but I spent more than a dollar on it. So if you find it, please send it back to me. I would really appreciate it. Okay, now let's go back to the video. Normal saline is widely used and is generally safe. However, caution should be used if mixing saline with other medications. Please consult a healthcare provider or pharmacist to find out if the medicine is compatible with normal saline. Normal saline used in a nebulizer often comes in a plastic container with a twist-off cap. Usually on the plastic container or on the packaging, it should state that the saline is 0.9% sodium chloride. Please note, saline flushes used in the hospital also contain 0.9% sodium chloride. The saline in the saline flushes can be used in the nebulizer. Since normal saline has a similar concentration to that of body fluids, when using normal saline in a nebulizer, the solution adds moisture to the lungs, which is the same concentration as body fluids. The added moisture will loosen mucus in the airways and will help thin them out. This will make it easier for a person to clear secretions via coughing or via suctioning if the person has a tracheostomy tube. Hypertonic saline is any saline which has a sodium chloride concentration above 0.9%. Hypertonic saline may be 3%, 6%, 7%, etc. of sodium chloride. Hypertonic saline has a concentration of saline which is higher than that of body fluids. Remembering back to science class, when a cell is exposed to a hypertonic solution, the water inside the cell will leave in an attempt to balance out the high solute concentration of the solution. The cell loses water and shrinks, and thus the hypertonic solution gains water. When hypertonic saline is used in a nebulizer, the solution which enters the airways has a higher concentration of solute than that which is in the cells lining the airway. The cells release water into the airway and shrink in size. 
The extra water in the airway helps moisten the mucus and helps thin them out. This will make it easier for a person to clear secretions via coughing or via suctioning if the person has a tracheostomy tube. There are a number of different hypertonic saline concentrations. The higher the concentration of saline, the more water will exit the cells and enter the airway. In general, it is advised to not mix hypertonic saline with other medicine. There is a lot of debate on how well hypertonic saline works. Ideally, the method is as follows. When a higher concentration of saline enters the airway, water from cells is released into the airway, which in turn adds water to the mucus. However, hypertonic solutions of sodium chloride causes irritation to the airways. This may in turn cause the airways to produce more mucus, and now a conundrum has been created. Although the hypertonic saline adds water to the airway, it may also increase the amount of mucus produced, which in turn may make clearing the airways more difficult. Please consult with your medical provider to discuss if you should use normal saline or hypertonic saline. For individuals during an asthma attack, researchers studied whether hypertonic saline or normal saline was a better choice to use in the nebulizer. Researchers who used hypertonic saline noted the patient coughed more and coughed up more mucus than those individuals who used normal saline. However, those individuals who used normal saline coughed less and seemed to be in less distress than those who used hypertonic saline. There seemed to be no definitive conclusion if the hypertonic saline worked better or worse than normal saline. Some hospitals have switched to using normal saline for people who are having asthma attacks. They have had great success using normal saline. Other hospitals still use hypertonic saline. A research study found giving children under 2 years old who had bronchiolitis 3% hypertonic saline in a nebulizer had favorable outcomes. Side note, bronchiolitis is the inflammation of the small airways in the lungs. The study also suggested using nebulized hypertonic saline in children under 2 years old with bronchiolitis may reduce the risk of hospitalization among outpatient and emergency department patients. A common treatment for people with cystic fibrosis is using 7% hypertonic saline in a nebulizer. In individuals with cystic fibrosis, their sputum is extremely thick and is very hard to cough up. Research has shown that using 7% hypertonic saline in people with cystic fibrosis twice a day in a nebulizer helps reduce the number of lung infections. From personal experience, most of the time, my medical providers do not know normal saline can be used in the nebulizer. Whenever I mention using saline, they always assume I mean hypertonic saline. They seem shocked that a person can use normal saline in a nebulizer. I have been given hypertonic saline while in the emergency department and in the hospital. When I use hypertonic saline, it burns my airways and I begin to violently cough, my eyes water, and my nose runs. It feels as though I have a bad cold. It is true, there is a lot of mucus which seems to be coughed up. However, that mucus often clogs my tracheostomy tube. Instead, I prefer normal saline. It does not aggravate my airways. It does a great job of thinning my secretions. If my airway is extremely dry, it may take up to 15 milliliters of normal saline run through the nebulizer to completely loosen my secretions. However, the normal saline is very gentle. It does not cause me to violently cough. It does not seem to cause my body to produce excess secretions. Now it is time for some questions from viewers. The first one is from Linda. She writes, My daughter has a tracheostomy tube. I use saline in her nebulizer, but sometimes it seems her airways are really dry. Is it okay to use a second vial of saline in the nebulizer? Thank you so much for your question. 
Yes, absolutely. You can use a second file of saline in the nebulizer. Please be mindful about how long you run the nebulizer. After about 30 minutes, the nebulizer needs to be turned off because otherwise it will overheat. If it overheats, it will shut off the nebulizer. This generally does not harm the nebulizer, but if it gets too hot, the nebulizer will stop working. So please feel free to use multiple vials of saline into the nebulizer, but be very mindful to turn off the nebulizer after 30 minutes. Let's go to our next question. Our next question is from Jeff. He writes, my son uses saline and a bronchodilator. Which one should I give him first? Thank you so much for your question. In general, a lot of respiratory therapists recommend giving the bronchodilator first. Remember, the bronchodilator opens up the airways. Once the airways are open, then it is very helpful to give the saline. The saline will help loosen the secretions and help the body get rid of the secretions. So once those airways are nice and open, then that saline can get deep into the airways, loosen up that, that mucus, and then help get rid of that mucus by thinning it out. So I would suggest giving the bronchodilator first and then followed by the, sa the saline. But again, please feel free to check with your respiratory therapist or your medical provider to see which one they recommend. The next question comes from Zoe. She writes, does using saline in the nebulizer require a prescription? The answer is surprisingly yes. In the United States, you need a prescription to run saline through a nebulizer. This sounds a little bit strange because saline is simply water and salt mixed together but I have found that saline in the nebulizer requires a prescription. I will tell you that you can use the same plastic saline bullets that you would put into a nebulizer, those same plastic saline bullets. You can squirt into your tracheostomy tube and then suction, and you can use that saline for suctioning. And I'm just going to tell you that I am not able to get my saline through the nebulizer covered by my insurance. It's all out of pocket. But I will tell you that the saline into my tracheostomy tube is covered 100% by my insurance. And you might think, well, what's the difference if I squirt it directly in my tracheostomy tube or if I put the saline into a nebulizer and then breathe in the saline from the nebulizer, what is the difference? And I would like to know that because I have not been able to find that difference out. But according to insurance companies, there is a difference. One thing to note also, if you're asking for saline in a nebulizer in the hospital, this sometimes poses complications. And for this reason, I always bring my own saline to the hospital because if you ask for saline in the hospital, I sometimes can't get it. And it's very weird and very complicated. And I just have found, just put those little saline bullets, I just put them in the pocket of my my ventilator bag, bring them with me to the hospital, and then I just ask for uh, nebulizer treatment, and then I will just use the saline into the nebulizer, and then I'm, I'm set. I don't need um, the doctor to write out a prescription for the nebulizer. So thank you so much for your questions. I really appreciate them. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave them in the comments or contact me by Facebook, MeWe, Instagram, or email. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye.